Hello everyone, I'm Jason Mays, WebML lead here at Google, and in this talk, you'll learn what's new with machine learning in the browser in 2023. So let's get going. WebML has been growing exponentially in both usage and development over the last three years. In fact, here, you can see the NPM usage for TensorFlow.js that's grown well over 10x in that time, going from around 11,000 weekly downloads to over 230,000 since 2020 and over 15 million cumulative downloads to date with no signs of this growth stopping anytime soon. WebML might be new, but it's got the potential to be one of the most widely used forms of machine learning over the coming years as people embrace it across industries in production. Now, many popular Google products are already powered by web technologies, such as Google Docs, Drive, and Photos. So we're seeing continued growth in adoption internally. In fact, teams like Google Meet already use WebML to deliver features like body segmentation for background blurring or removal live in the browser, powered by our MediaPipe web solutions, as you see on this slide. But WebML is growing externally too, and we're pleased to announce that Adobe are planning to use WebML in Adobe Photoshop Web to bring functionality such as the Smart Selection tool to the browser, enabling anyone, anywhere, to use their favorite Photoshop features on almost any device. When it comes to the object selection tool shown on this slide, embracing client-side machine learning for this feature can provide Adobe's users with a better user experience by eliminating cloud server latency, resulting in faster predictions and a more responsive user interface. In fact, by bringing such models to the client side, it could enable users to work with the app offline for common important tasks that are powered by machine learning. We look forward to seeing what other features come to Adobe Photoshop Web in the future. To learn more, check out the write-up on the TensorFlow blog shown on the slide. Next up, we're also announcing Visual Blocks for ML, a JavaScript framework for developers that enables low-code or no-code ML authoring within any product ecosystem, including yours. And here you can see how we're able to make a full end-to-end ML-powered web app using the available building blocks defined by the team, such as segmenting a body from an image, performing style transfer on the image, or even combining model outputs with real-time shader effects, just by dragging out nodes and connecting them together in seconds to create a custom graph to perform any desired task. The provided editor shown here allows you to drag inputs or outputs to any nodes they're compatible with, allowing you to bring ideas to life in a very fast manner and share with others on your team for feedback with a simple link. We're pleased to announce that you'll soon be able to take this experimental open source framework and use it with your own products and services. Now, we've bootstrapped the project with a whole bunch of useful off-the-shelf models and input nodes for accessing common sensors and visual outputs to compare results from common model types with ease that you can use right out the box. Once integrated into your system, however, you can then add custom nodes for your own client-side or server-side models to do whatever you wish, allowing you to chain together things that matter to your team in almost any way and bring your ML-powered ideas to life visually in a way everyone can then use to launch ideas into production faster, and it's completely themable too, so you can fit it to your own brand style. Visual Blocks for ML can even run in Python Colabs, exposing your code cells as draggable nodes, allowing you to embed an interactive live demo of your work right at the top of your Colab, instead of having to host the website elsewhere for the demo. You can then edit nodes live and see the results of your own inputs and outputs. So head on over to the link shown to learn more about how you can use this customizable visual framework for a whole bunch of useful tasks and test out new ML ideas for your product or service in minutes. Next up, MediaPipe also offer web-based implementations that are part of the WebML ecosystem here at Google. MediaPipe provide customizable on-device solutions that run across platforms that you can use today. We're pleased to announce that this year, we're launching MediaPipe Studio that can provide solutions such as hand gesture recognition that run entirely in the browser as shown. You can integrate these solutions into your web apps in just a few lines of code, and many of them are customizable via transfer learning if you know a bit of Python, which means you can use your own training data to alter them to fit your needs and then deploy to the web via the browser. In addition, we're pleased to announce new ML solutions this year, such as face blend shape classification that you could use to create a virtual avatar matching users' facial expressions all in real time. So go ahead and try out MediaPipe's latest WebML offerings right in your browser using the link shown. Next, you can now also use state-of-the-art decision forest models, such as random forests and gradient boosted trees, trained on your own data within the TensorFlow.js ecosystem. But what does this mean? How could you actually use this? Well, 
Maybe you've got a spreadsheet full of data on penguins that you're studying, and then you realize the person recording the data forgot to label some of the species classifications for some penguins, and there's several missing rows that need to be filled out. Well, here, you can save a version of your spreadsheet with the correctly labeled rows as a CSV file, as highlighted here, and import that as your training data to use. You can then train a custom decision forest model on that data using the code shown on this slide in a Python CoLab notebook. Now, once trained, you can export that from the Python saved model format using the regular TensorFlow.js converter, as shown, to create a WebML-capable model in the model.json format that can run entirely in the browser. Finally, here's the code you can write in JavaScript to load and use that saved model you just converted on the previous slide. Now, you can predict all the future data in a privacy-preserving way with low latency or even offline, just like using any other TensorFlow.js model. And in this case, you can now predict the missing values for our penguin data for the rows that did not have their species recorded with your newly custom-trained model. It should be noted that while the original implementation of decision forest algorithms were in C++, the exact same algorithms are now compiled to WebAssembly and integrated seamlessly into TensorFlow.js. This allows TensorFlow.js to support all the latest features and is very performant. To get started fast, check out our official tutorial that will walk you through every step. Now, some of you might be wondering how this all links to simple ML that can also work with spreadsheet data and was launched earlier in the year. Well, we're pleased to announce we're also optimizing that flow to export directly to TensorFlow.js as well. Check out their IO talk linked in the description for more details on that, and stay tuned for updates as you make Simple ML more WebML friendly too. Today, we're also releasing a visual debugger for WebML models that can help you compare outputs of the individual operations performed when executed across different TensorFlow.js backends, such as WebGL versus WebAssembly. This tool allows you to find out when the outputs of operations start to differ and by how much to find potential bugs when using models across different backends, environments, and devices. Try it for yourself today at the link shown. Moving on to performance improvements, we've made significant optimizations to our WebGL backend. At the individual op level, you can see how common ops are now able to get up to 4.1 times the performance for free when you use and include the latest version of TensorFlow.js in your projects. Now, optimizing ops is great, but how does this translate to real-world model performance? Let's see. Well, here you can see how his popular models are able to benefit from the optimizations on the previous slide. For the model shown here, you can now get up to 1.59 times the performance, again, just by using the latest version of TensorFlow.js. This means WebML models are going to run faster than ever before, freeing up more processing power to do other things, like rendering graphics or user interface updates. Congratulations to the TensorFlow.js team for his great work. Next up, we've got breaking news that Chrome is adding support for WebGPU in Chrome Stable. This brings the power of a billion GPUs to the web, enabling compute-heavy applications like codecs, games, and machine learning to run right in the browser, with more detail and higher frame rates than ever before. At I.O. last year, we announced support for our WebGPU backend within TensorFlow.js, but now you can use it without any experimental flags right in Chrome, and other browsers should follow suit in due course. Check out the Chrome WebGPU I.O. talk linked in the description to learn more about this amazing new web standard. But what does this mean for the WebML community? Well, this means we're now able to run larger models like Diffusion models in the browser via TensorFlow.js at incredible speeds. A standard 512 by 512 image from this generative model can be created in around 10 seconds on a modern graphics card. By contrast, Running the model on our previous WebGL backend would have taken over three times longer to generate the same image. This means we shall continue to see larger and more complex models being pushed to the client side that can be cached locally via IndexedDB to save on cloud compute costs. And we're excited to see what models you convert and use in the browser with our new WebGPU backend. So do tag us in anything you create using the hashtag WebML. Now, none of this performance would be possible without the amazing collaboration between the TensorFlow.js team and Intel's web graphics team, who contributed some tremendous optimizations to our WebGPU backend. As Chrome now supports WebGPU by default, everyone can now benefit from this amazing work, which is a huge win for WebML users, as you can now get up to 3.8 times the performance than what was possible before. Feel free to pause the video and check out the benchmarks the TensorFlow.js team got for WebGPU versus our latest WebGL backend mentioned earlier in the talk that compares results across devices and models. Next up, launching a new backend is great, 
but if it does not support the common ops needed to run most models, that would not be so useful. So we're pleased to announce we have now achieved over 93% op parity across all backends that we support. That is, WebGL, WebAssembly, WebGPU, and JavaScript. This means users of TensorFlow.js can choose the backend to execute on as needed to get the best performance from the device they're running on, with less chance of failure due to an operation not being supported on that backend. Now, with all these great updates, even the research community are taking note. And earlier in the year, we announced support to convert and run Python-based JAX functions and Flax machine learning models in the browser, bringing state-of-the-art solutions to the web. This ultimately means more eyes on your amazing work and higher frictionless shareability when you need a demo for your next JAX creation. In the demo on this slide, you can see a recent model from a Google team that's capable of matching provided text prompts to a desired image right in the browser. Learn more on the link to blog and try it for yourself. Now let's head on over to see what's new from the community with solutions built by people just like you who are already using WebML in their products and services to give you a taste of what's possible. Fundamentally, what we're trying to do is build tools to allow anybody to be their true self. Um, there's a lot of people that feel uncomfortable on camera. Here's like a much more detailed side-by-side -side view of my face being captured alongside uh, the face of the 3D character. And so what's happening is it's tracking individual facial blend shapes um, mm -hmm. and then relaying them back into that Unreal Engine to uh, render them. I work as a radiologist and uh, the last four years I've been really interested in using artificial intelligence for segmentation. And this is a really nice thing with uh, TensorFlow.js, I think, is that you can interact with the AI models. It doesn't have to do fully automatic uh, predictions, but you can actually kind of guide uh, the models to get the result that you want. We're going to see a, an animatronic talking backpack. Um, that uses uh, face mesh, and it was sort of an, a, a comedian in the wild experiment um, that respected social distancing. It does what you see. It, it puts all these tracking points on a face, and it can track it with and without glasses. It has an incredibly high frame rate, uh, even in JavaScript and even in browser. So wouldn't it be great if you could use this technology to control animatronics? So this is an example of how Cardinal Health is using RoboFlow to improve the back rooms of pharmacies. So they have a division of their company um, that works with pharmacists where one pharmacist can manage several locations remotely over a, a video stream. And so this runs in the browser on an iPad. And previously it was just a video chat between the pharmacist and the technician. And then they used RoboFlow to add on a pill counting feature um, that helps the pharmacists uh, be augmented by the computer vision model so they don't have to count from scratch. They can um, use the model to estimate and then you know, adjust up and down where the model has you know, not gotten an exact count. The video that I'd love to show here is uh, a video piece that I constructed, which I call Mirror Exercise. And this is an AI-generated duet with myself. So what you're seeing here is um, in the, the figure in black is my real motion capture data from a couple data taking sessions in the studio. And in blue, you see a dancing accompaniment that is generated by the model. So in each case, the model is seeing a certain segment of my movements and is um, creating a slight variation on it in some sense. It's a hand tracking engine called Yoha. And so what it does is it processes the uh, video feed of your webcam and it detects the location of your hand in this video feed. And the goal of it is that it allows you to quickly sketch something roughly similar to how you would do it um, on a whiteboard. Himo is a visual workflow engine that allows you to build very complex solutions in just minutes. And we do that through a drag and drop interface, which helps you uh, define any kind of process without the need for coding. So uh, this is the final version of the program. The video is a bit sped up, so things happen fast, but you can see that as water is taken out from the container, the graph reflects the changes of, uh, in the level of the liquid, liquid which, is, which is what we wanted. We wanted to go beyond machine and even beyond the clinic. And so that's really when we decided to expand our platform into computer vision and delivering care directly into patients' homes on their own devices. We're a medical device that we can run on any device fully web-based and you can see these patients doing different exercises, upper body, lower body, with real-time feedback, counting their reps, 
We track their range of motion. We gather, gather all that and send it back to the clinician for review to help modify their home exercise plans accordingly. Wow, some great stuff right there. If you make something, do use the hashtag WebML so we can find it and feature you in our future events and shows. All right, so to wrap things up, essentially we're at the birth of a new era that makes machine learning more accessible for everyone to use with the power of web-based machine learning. And making machine learning accessible to JavaScript developers enables far more than ever before to bring their ideas to life with around 70% of professional developers choosing to use JavaScript. Now, there are a number of teams at Google who actively contribute to the future of WebML, such as the Chrome team, who are working on new web standards that enable teams like TensorFlow.js and MediaPipe to build on top of those stacks and achieve great performance. And the one thing that unifies all these teams is that they can use or enable machine learning for JavaScript developers right in the browser. And by running client-side in JavaScript, you can get superpowers that are impossible or hard to achieve on the server side, such as privacy, as no sensor data from things like the camera or microphone need to be sent to the server for classification, protecting the user's data. Or what about the ability to run offline on device so you can run even more tasks in areas of low or no connectivity after the page load? You also get low latency to run some models in real time. Our body pose and segmentation models, for example, can run over 120 frames per second on a mid-range laptop. Next up, lower costs as you don't need to hire and keep running expensive cloud-based GPUs and processors. And even better, you can offer a frictionless experience for your end users, as no install is required to run a web page. Just go to a link, and it works. Now, on that note, it also means you can leverage the reach and scale of the web that has over 6 billion browser-enabled devices capable of viewing your creation. So let's take a quick moment to see how the WebML ecosystem comes together. First off, you've got the web browsers, such as Chrome. They implement new standards and technologies such as JavaScript APIs, WebGL, WebAssembly, WebGPU, and WebNN. Machine learning libraries like TensorFlow.js can build upon these robust web standards to run calculations super fast, allowing you to run many of the machine learning models you know and love right in a browser on the client side. Then there are teams like MediaPipe that have their own pipelines written in C++ that can still deploy to the web with technologies like WebAssembly, exposing even more models to the web ecosystem. And these two teams work closely together to ensure the most popular models from MediaPipe are also ported to the TensorFlow.js stack to give users more options as to how they run those models. Now, it also turns out that TensorFlow.js is the only form of TensorFlow that can digest and run other forms of the TensorFlow ecosystem. In fact, we can run TensorFlow Lite models directly in the browser, along with select models from TensorFlow Hub, and even TensorFlow Python models can be converted using our command line converter to then run in the browser via TensorFlow.js. All right, now you know the building blocks. If you want to go deeper in this subject area, come check out my brand new course over on the Google Developers YouTube channel to learn how to use WebML in your next creation. All you need to know is some JavaScript, no PhD required, so invite a friend and go from zero to hero in this YouTube series at goo.gle forward slash learn dash WebML. I'll see you there.